Good evening, Oasis Christian Center, a family church. We are so excited that you have decided to live stream with us tonight. We hope that you were blessed by the word that you received, and we know that God has something real good in store for you all tonight. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight, Lord, just thanking you for the opportunity, Father, to hear your word. Father, I ask that we all come together in one mind, one accord, just receiving what you've intended this night, Father. And we thank you and praise you for everything that you're doing each and every day. Amen. At this time, I'm going to turn over to Miss Patty and the Praise and Worship team. Hallelujah. It is good to be in God's house. Praise the Lord. We're going to worship God. We're going to praise him and worship him and let him know how much we love him. Hallelujah.
He's still raising people up. He's still bringing the gospel around the nations. Hallelujah. And he is holy. Amen. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. And better, jobs, jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, raises and bonuses. Benefits, benefits, sales and commissions, sales and commissions. Favorable, settlements. favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, and inheritances. Interest, and income. interest and income, rebates and returns, rebates and returns. discounts and dividends, discounts and dividends. Checks, in the mail. checks in the mail, 
gifts and surprises, finding money, bills decreased, bills pay all, blessings and increase. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all my financial needs that I may have more than enough to give it to the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. I would like to remind you of several ways that you uh, could give your tithes and offering. You can text to give at 334-274-7885. To my left, you will also see our online giving option. Then you also have the opportunity to mail your tithes and offering to P.O. Box 246, Smith Station, Alabama, 36877. Praise the Lord. It's so good to have all of you join us tonight here at Oasis Christian Center on Wednesday night service. And I'm Pastor Sharon, and this is Pastor Rock. And we just want to thank each and every one of you for being here and just to be ready to receive what God has for you tonight. Our speaker tonight is Amy Miller. And just uh, receive what God has because God ha always has a special word just for you. And I know that the word of God is going to go forth and it won't return void. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So let's first go to the Lord in prayer. I always feel more comfortable puts me at ease when we say a little prayer before I go into teaching. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you even in the midst of what's going on that you allow a few of us to come together and get your word out to the world, dear Lord. Holy Spirit, I ask that you guide and you lead me into exactly what your people need to hear tonight. Dear Lord, I thank you. I thank you for keeping your hand over the rest of this service. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So the title of my message is Tithing Even in the Storm. And I really, really want this to be a message of compassion, not a message of law. But I need you to hang with me for just a minute while I lay a little foundation. So in Leviticus 27, Moses goes to Mount Sinai where God gives him quite a few laws. One of which talks about tithing and that tithing is a law. So in Leviticus 27.30... You guys want to go there with me? I'm actually going to read out of the NLT this, at this point, and I'll change a little bit. But at, in 2730, it says, One tenth of the produce of the land, whether grain from the fields or fruit from the trees, belong to the Lord and must be set apart to him as holy. That is the law, plain and simple. So tithing is a spiritual law. Just like we have man-made laws here on earth that we have to follow. For example, speed limits. We have to follow speed limits here. If I go over a speed limit, there could be consequences. If I stay within the speed limit, my insurance may reward me with extra funds. Sometimes we may get caught speeding, but we may be given a warning. That's mercy. Sometimes we may be speeding and the car in front of us get pulled over or it go unnoticed. That's grace. The same things apply to tithing. There can be consequences for not tithing, but it is not God who punishes us. When we're not following the law, it can make us vulnerable to the curses of the world. So it actually opens doors when we're not doing following the law like we're supposed to be. When we don't tithe, we're trusting the world to supply our needs. Therefore, we have to endure the world's consequences. Right now, during this pandemic, we may be wondering who's going to supply our needs. 
I believe that most of us, or a lot of us, have learned that we can't depend on jobs because some are gone. Some people are not working now. Some people's hours have been cut. Grocery stores, we can't depend on grocery stores because they don't have the things that we need. Our government, they've promised us stimulus checks, but that doesn't mean everyone will get one. Our one true provider is God. Yes. He is not affected by a world pandemic like this one. Amen. The world, he is beyond the world. He is beyond what the world knows. So this does not affect him. If you are trusting the world to be your provider and you are not paying your tithes, then you are vulnerable to the curses of the world. But I can tell you, if you are paying your tithes, you're telling the Lord you trust him to supply you and your family's every need. And guess what I know? In Philippians 4, 19, it tells us something wonderful. And the same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches, which have not given to us, in, which have, are given to us in Christ Jesus. So what that's telling us is that God will reward us in his riches. When we pay our tithes, not worldly riches, in his riches, which is so much better than what the world can give to us. Being a faithful tither, I can say my needs and my family's needs have always been met. Over and beyond, even during this pandemic, my family has, has not gone without. And I say that because my family, we are faithful tithers. I'll give you a little testimony. Um, my husband works as a salesman, and um, during this pandemic time, uh, he has been at home working, but because of his job, did not really think he would have a lot going on because the economy is kind of down. Um, and he kind of made himself a to-do list of things he could get caught up and get done in between taking calls and whatnot. But he has been so busy making deals and doing things for his company that he hasn't been able to get to any of those things. Mm -hmm. And the thing with that is when he brings those accounts into his company, we get a little bit extra from those. So even in a pandemic, we're still being blessed over and beyond what the world even understands. Amen. The world would never understand that you would be blessed, over blessed during a time like this. In these times, it'd be easy to say, God, I've lost my job. I don't have the hours to pay my tithes. Or God, I'm waiting on that stimulus check to pay my tithes. Now wait, let me qualify that. So if you did get a stimulus check, yes, you should pay tithes on that. It's the law. But you should not be waiting to back pay your tithes with your stimulus check. <laughs> that is just not what this is all about. You're paying your tithes to God to say, God, I, I trust, yes. trust you to meet my needs. I am not waiting on the government to meet my needs. I know that you're gonna meet my needs. He wants, God doesn't need your money. He wants you to trust that he's got you. Waiting on the world to supply your tithes is where you're going to mess up because you're robbing God. Sorry, I have scriptures in a couple of places. So we're going to go to Malachi 3. 8 through 12 in the NIV version. Will a mere mortal rob God, yet you rob me? 
But you ask, how are we robbing you? In tithes and offerings, you are under a curse, your whole nation, because you are robbing me. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops, and the vines in your fields will not drop their fruit before it is ripe, says the Lord Almighty. Then all the nations will call you blessed, for yours will be a delightful land, says the Lord Almighty. So, the Lord's saying here, you know what? Pay your tithes. If you're not, you're robbing me. But if you, if you want to test me, test me. Because what he's saying here is he will give you more that if you don't test him and don't pay your tithes, he's going to give you more than the world could ever dream to give you. Amen. He's going to protect your crops. He's going to protect your fruit. He's going to protect whatever you put your hand to, whatever job you do. He's going to protect that for you if you are given your tithes. And I don't know about you, but I don't need the world's protection. Amen. I need the Lord's protection. I need that heavenly protection. So I would much rather test him. So if you're not a tither today, I encourage you, take this verse at its word and test him. Test him and see if he doesn't protect you and do these things that he says. This word, we stand on this because we know that it's true. Yes. Paying your tithes when times are good is easy. But paying your tithes during the hard times says to God, I trust you in the storm and I trust you, God, to get me through this storm. Now I'm going to give a personal testimony. And y'all just hang with me. It's a little lengthy. But it, it's actually, um, I hope that you guys learned some things from it. Because I had to learn some growth from it. Um, many years ago, I had a job. It was a great job. It had great benefits. It was a great company. Great pay. It was the perfect job. But my walk with God wasn't perfect. And I can't even say perfect. It I didn't really have a walk with God at that time, and I wasn't paying my tithes. Now, let me tell you, I grew up with a Christian mother. I grew up in a home where my mother was a faithful tither, tither so I knew all too well the concept of tithing. I knew what I was supposed to do. So it wasn't that I didn't know. I had a promotional opportunity at another company, and I didn't pray about it. I didn't consult God. And even though I didn't do those things, I still had an uneasy feeling about it. But I just told myself it was nerves. It was okay. It was a promotion. It had to be good. So I took that job. I quickly found out that it was not for me. It wasn't the right company. It wasn't the right job. Um, there were many days I would sit in my car and cry before I went into work. So it, it just was not the right fit for me. But God decided that I would stay with this company for a few years. Not out of malice or meanness or saying, I told you so. He wanted to teach me some things during this time. It was during this time I got back into church, and actually that's when I became, came to Oasis. Um, and the Lord really, really had some time to work on me, especially in the obedience area. I never, ever wanted to have to go through that uh, again. And I wanted to be a testimony to people to be able to tell them to make sure that you're, you're talking to God before you make those big jumps. Not even big jumps. Ask God about everything. Amen. I didn't want anyone else to have to go through that. But I still wasn't really paying my tithes. I was doing some things good and not others. And I was abruptly let go of at that job. They told me, um, they came in one day and said they needed to make cuts. And someone from the corporate office would come down and take my spot. My income at that time was half of our family's income. So half of our family's income was gone at that time. Since I knew about the law of tithing, but relied on the world to supply my needs, I was vulnerable to the curses of the world. But God had mercy. Let me go back. But God. 
God had mercy. And he put me, he put me at a job, he put a job in my lap less than two weeks later. However, it was a job, but there was a 10,000 annual cut for our family. But God supplied the grace for me to do this new job in a new industry that I had never worked in. It was got, like God was saying, okay, let's start over. Let's start from square one. Let's build you back up. And even though there was less, there was always enough. So world math would say, you just took a $10,000 cut and you're paying money into your church and you're okay? How does that even work? That's in the world's mind. But our God's always going to supply our needs. So in God, with God's riches and God's glory, he's got us as long as we're trusting him. I was there for a few years. My walk grew. I became a faithful tither, and I will not go back. And God laid the desire on my heart to work for the Muscogee County School District. I never had a job laid on my heart or a workplace laid on my heart. So, of course, God had been so good to me, I ran with it. So every time I would pass the building on Macon Road, I would say, I'm going to work there one day. Now, granted, I could have, if Muscogee School District was, was the place I was supposed to go, I could have worked in numerous buildings, any school, any of our buildings. But the Lord laid on my heart that building. So that's what I prayed for. So I got a call for a job. It was the lowest grade admin assistant. There was no pay increase from my uh, previous job. And it was for a three year grant. So I was only promised three years, no more. But I knew that God was faithful. And because I was a faithful tither, that he had more in store for me. He wouldn't just bring me to this low end job for three years and not build me and not get me further. So three years passed, and the grant actually extended for five years, but I didn't even need it. Because after three years passed, a major promotion was presented, presented itself. But the job description stated that they wanted, a, wanted you to hold a certain job title for at least five years to have held as a prerequisite. I had never held that title, but I had done all of the requested duties of that job. But now, typically in our HR, they get so many resumes that they, you're not even considered if you don't meet those requirements. I did get an interview because God, because God knew what my next steps were. And because I was a faithful tither, I got that interview. After interview, 10 minutes after interviewing, the chief HR um, director came out and asked me if I would take that job 10 minutes after. Because God knew. God wasn't playing anymore. God said, let's just get this show on the road. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you what came with that. What came with that is over a $10,000 a year increase. Ooh, so Jesus. God had restored all that I had allowed the devil to steal from me. And I do say allow because I did. I wasn't tithing, so I allowed the world to open that door and the devil to come in and to take what he wanted. So I did that. I'm still in that job today, and I absolutely love it. I've had a few opportunities present themselves, and I've had to turn them down, or, or uh, they not just the door didn't open for me. And I have people ask me all the time, but we don't understand why. And I have to, I have to simply say, I consulted. I consulted with a higher authority. Yeah. And they say, it's not time. When it's time, we'll take it. Because I do not want to get back in that boat. Sometimes God will allow the world to bring us down so he can lift us up. Okay, I want to bring out one last point. Romans 8.28, I'm going to read that out of my Bible too. Actually, Romans 8.26 uh, through 28. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. 
And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us, believers in harmony with God's own will. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. When you pay your tithes, you become a part of that all things good. I was, I was taking a run the other morning, and the Lord laid this on my heart. I was actually listening, I think, to Pastor Sharon's sermon, and she, she brought this scripture out, and the Lord made me see it in a different way, so hopefully I can get it out of my mouth. When you pay your tithes anytime, but even especially during a storm, it's going to bless somebody else. All things work to the good. Even your tithes that come out of your storm help the next person during their storm. So when you put your tithes in, you're, you're giving it to the church and you're saying, I trust God to guide the church to who needs to have this. And during that person's storm that the church is blessing, they're getting the good that you put in through your tithes. You're, you're basically planting a seed because you never know when you're going to be in an even worse storm that you need that supply and that help from the church that someone else has put in and planted a seed. It's a cycle. It's just a cycle that just keeps going around. I learned by paying my tithes, I never have to worry if I'll be provided for, if my family will be provided for. I learned that I can help be a part of God's good plan. That was something else I wanted to bring up. In, with, in that verse, I, I went back to 26 because the Holy Spirit kind of showed me that today, and here I'm trying to miss it. Um, the Holy Spirit is always leading and guiding. So he's always leading the church. He's always leading us. He's always leading us into what to put in, what to give to one another. just wanted to bring that out. I didn't want to speak about tithes today for it to be a negative thing or it to be a law thing. <clears throat> I really wanted to be compassionate. Um, I wanted you to see that God wants to be your provider. He wants to be the provider that the world can't. He wants you to have exactly what you want. He wants every need met. He only asks that you give him 10% of what, of what you bring into your household. That is it. But that is just so that you say, I trust you, Lord. And I thank you, Lord. I thank you for all that you've done for my family. I thank you for the talents that you've given me to do the job that I can make that money from. He wants you to have exactly, exactly what you need and what you desire. Praise the Lord. That was an awesome word. Thank yes, you so was. much, Amy. God is good and he is faithful. And he does take care of the tither. He does supply all of our need. And I'm so grateful tonight that the Lord had me uh, learn about tithing myself many years ago. And I'm like Amy. I won't go back. I'm staying with tithing for the rest of my life because God has supplied all my needs. He'll never let you down. Amen. Amen. So uh, we just want to thank you again for joining us tonight. And if... Um, if you've never made Jesus Christ Lord of your life, we want to just give you this opportunity tonight to ask him into your heart. And uh, so let's just bow our heads tonight and let's go to the Lord in prayer. And just repeat this prayer after me tonight if you're uh, wanting to invite the Lord in your heart. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father I, ask you I ask you to forgive me of my sins. To forgive me of my sins. 
I ask you. I ask you to be Lord of my life. To be Lord of my life. I ask you into my heart. I ask you into my heart. And I ask you to help me, Father. And I ask you to help me, Father. To change me. To change me. I surrender my life. I surrender my life. I surrender my heart. I surrender my heart. To you this night. To you this night. I receive you. I receive you. As my Lord. As my Lord. And my Savior. And my Savior. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And we thank the Lord for for that tonight. And and um if, if you pray that prayer with us tonight, we would love for you to share it with us in the comments. If you just sit, send to us that you have received the Lord as your Savior tonight, and we just rejoice with you. You are in, in the kingdom of God now, and it is wonderful. It is an awesome place to be, and you'll never, never regret living for God. And also, we want to give you the opportunity tonight, if... Um, if you feel like you, maybe you have asked the Lord into your heart, but maybe you feel like your relationship with him just isn't where it needs to be. Maybe there's areas in your life that you feel like you need to surrender to the Lord. And uh, if, you, if you want to rededicate your life to the Lord tonight, we just ask you to pray this prayer with us also. If you'll just bow your heads, please. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I ask you. I ask you. To come into my heart. To come into my heart. Holy. Holy. And Father, I rededicate. And Father, I rededicate. I consecrate. I consecrate. I surrender my life. I surrender my life. Totally to you. Totally to you. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father. That I renew my relationship. That I renew my relationship. And you receive me. And you receive me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And if you pray that prayer with us tonight for rededication, we'd also love to hear from you, too, if you just send us a comment tonight. And before we turn it back over to Ashley, we just want to say hi to our church family. We just miss all of you so much. And we're just praying for each and every person watching tonight that you stay safe and well. And we just believe it won't be long. We'll be back together again. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. On behalf of Pastor Rock and Pastor Sharon, I know that they greatly appreciate and um, everyone tuning in each and every service. We know that you were blessed with the word that you received, and we want to invite you to tune back in live Sunday morning, 1030 a.m. Make sure um, that you tune in, and we look forward to um, seeing everyone soon. We want everyone to stay safe. And I would also like to give a reminder of different ways to give. You can text to give at 334-274-7885. We also have our online giving option, as well as mailing your ties and offering to P.O. Box 246, Smith Station, Alabama, 36877. Again, we love you all, we miss you, and we know that we'll be back together soon. God bless you.